On, on behalf of the Arizona Historical Society, I want to welcome all of you. We are, believe it or not, we are just as thrilled and just as excited about this as you all are. And we hope that uh, what we have put together for you will be something that will be uh, a lasting memory and uh, the beginning of many, many long-lasting friendships. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Okay, here we are. Are, you, are we here? Oh, oh, here. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you. Good to have you. Let's try to stick in sideways. Can you get it? Put your head in one here. Yeah. 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 I need to stand up. Just blink the body. Make sure it can be I know. Okay, what are we doing, Tom? We're waiting for. No, no, no. She has a presentation she's going to make. Hang on a second. Lorraine Jones is the one that's moving that case right now that's going to break her back. Um, she is the one who has put this exhibit together for us. She's here from the museum working with Tom Peterson. And thank you, Lorraine Jones. Yeah, I particularly want to thank Lorraine and, and, and Arnie Franks, who's our volunteer and who knows uh, a lot about Sam Hughes' Tucson. Believe it or not, he's, been, he's done a tremendous amount of work from this side. And uh, Doreen Crow, who is our registrar, and the library staff who has done a, a, a lot of, has given us a lot of help in putting this exhibit together. And our, and our museum photographer, uh, Armin Benayan, who is right there, and he's going to be taking pictures, uh, keep on taking pictures of, of you throughout the morning. So, welcome again, and uh, we, we really, uh, we really have are having a great time with you, and uh, we, we want you to have a great time with us, too. Okay, thank Bravo. you. Here we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lorraine, what do we do? Cut the ribbon. Cut the ribbon. Where do you want to cut? Anywhere you want. Give us a ribbon. If you pull on one side, I'll hold the other, and your mom can cut it easily. Okay. Building a town is officially open. Thank you, Thank you. These are all things that belong to Sam and I'm not here. I think you should know that George Hand was a <laughs> if, if some of you want to find me and look at the exhibit back that side sure first. So she would have been okay. Okay, so she would have been the sister to my great great my great grandma. In that picture. She was crazy. How are you doing? Oh I'm just overwhelmed. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Today is October the 24th, 9th.
Today is October the 24th, 2002, in front of the Arizona Historical Society Museum, right next to the University of Arizona, for the ribbon cutting of the exhibit for Samuel Hughes, for the ribbon cutting of the Samuel Hughes exhibit. This is the Samuel Hughes exhibit. My hobby is building a town, the story of Samuel Hughes. The old map of Tucson. Town builder. Town builder. In March 1858, Sam Hughes became one of the first Anglo Americans to make Tucson his home. Like many other newcomers who followed him during the next century, he discovered that the Sonoran Desert climate revived his ailing health. For the next 60 years, his story was intertwined with that of Tucson. He helped direct the city's growth by fostering a public school system and by serving in public office. When 29 years of age, Sam Hughes first arrived in Tucson. He saw a tiny adobe brick village cluttered around the former Spanish Presidio walls. J. Ross Brown's 1840, 1864 sketch is one of the earliest images of the settlement that the United States has recently acquired from Mexico under the Gaston Purchase. Sam later wrote his impressions of Tucson. After breakfast, we tuck stroll to see we tuck stroll to see the town to see the town. It did not take us long as all the town was inside of what is now called Court Plaza. But a few houses on the outside on what is now called Pearl Street, there were three stores. I was looking for the Nichols. Born in Wales, 1829, young Sam Hughes immigrated to the large family, immigrated his large family to Pennsylvania. He lasted only three days in school, where his heavy accent and poor English made him the butt of jokes. As a near illiterate boy of 12, he worked at the cotton factory and for a tool maker. After the factory was shut down, he went to work for a baker and then sought adventure on a canal and river boats. During the trip to New York, during a trip to New Orleans, U.S. Senator Henry Clay, a passenger, advised Sam never to gamble. Throughout the rest of his life, Hughes heeded Clay's advice. In 1850, Sam headed west and used his cooking skills to prosper during the California Gold Rush. He made and lost fortunes by providing supplies and hospitality to miners in Placerville, Sacramento, and Eureka. Sam also participated in several, in several skirmishes with Indians along the Rogue River. Weakened by tuberculosis, he headed for Texas to raise cattle in a drier climate. Believing himself near death, he stopped in Tucson on 12th of March, 1858 to, to, recu to recuperate for a month while his partners pressed on. Sam's lungs improved dramatically and he decided to take advantage of opportunity in the Santa Cruz River Valley. Sam Hughes and Company, Tucson, Arizona, traders in stock and butchers, having on hand at all times choice cattle, fat and in good condition, where we are enabled to supply our customers with fine beef, either wholesale or retail, stock of all kinds, purchased and sold for cash, Samuel Hughes, November 17, 1859.
Sam opened a butcher shop and quickly obtained contracts to supply the Overland State stations with meat. He used this grain mill and these steel yard scales, a compact, cheap, and accurate device for measuring weigh in for measuring weigh in his early Tucson business. Sparkling black eyes, black hair, and deep red cheeks. At Anasha Santa Cruz was a lovely seven year old girl when she met 29 year old Sam Hughes. Her Spanish great grandfather's military career had brought him to the Tucson Presidio in 1784. The second of his three sons, Juan, was an artist who painted frescoes in the newly built church of San Javier. Juan Maria Santa Cruz, Juan and his wife, Petra's youngest son, was born in 1814. In 1842, he married Manuela Borges, Athanasia, born on August 14, 1850, and named for a Greek saint, was the younger of Juan and, and Manuela's two daughters. Athanasia's father died from cholera when she was an infant. Her mother died when Athanasia was eight. That same year, her sister Petra married Hiram Stevens, and Athanasia moved with him and moved and Athanasia moved in with them. Then Sam Hughes arrived. Sam quickly made up his mind to marry the young girl, but waited patiently until she was older. Upon his return to Tucson with the Union soldiers on May 27, 1862, 32 year old Sam and 11 year old and 11 year 11 year 9 month old Athanasia exchanged vows in the side chapel of Saint Javier because Sam because Sam refused to convert to Catholicism the couple was not allowed to marry at the main altar Athanasia had hoped to wear white at her wedding but was, but was overruled by her aunt Guadalupe Santa Cruz who reminded her that marriage was a solemn event Instead, Athanasia wore a black gown and mantilla. Following two stillbirths in 1865, Sam and Athanasia produced a daughter, Isabel, known as Lizzie. The second child, Margaret, known as Maggie, was born while Sam and Athanasia were on a belated honeymoon trip to San Francisco and Los Angeles. In California, the young couple posed for this formal portrait, enjoyed cultural events, purchased furniture, and discovered new inventions such as the sewing machine. Very much so. Look, they were all Joseph P. See, he initiated the uh, oh, I have the only thing people in the bars and the Could I impose on you to scoot back just one second? I'm gonna video. <laughs> Athanasia experienced 15 pregnancies. Ten children survived into adulthood. Into, adu into adulthood. Ten children survived into adulthood. Thomas died after four years of illness in, in 1900. Another son named Matt. Ten children survived into adulthood. Thomas died after four after four years of illness in 1900. Another son named Samuel was paralyzed in a fall in San Francisco in 1802 in 1908. He returned home to be cared for until his death in later in year he returned home to be cared for until his death a year later. The growing the growing household included Sam's sister, Annie Hughes, who lived with Athanasia and Sam for eighteen years after